Hello Average Anglers, welcome to another live match with the Average Angler. Today we're at Acorn Fishery again. It's a Tuesday um, cost cutter match and I've drawn peg 36 again. This match today is the start of what I am calling the £100 cost cutter challenge. So what I'm doing is I'm putting £100 of my money in that envelope and I'm going to see how many cost cutter matches I can fish before I run out of money. And it's just going to focus on uh, peg fees we're not going to do bait and all that other stuff and petrol and everything because it just gets complicated and it's boring there let's see how we get on guys catching a bit right then it's just starting now just putting a little pot full of maggots on my uh on my deep line six foot of water and i'm just shipping out now into my uh nice little shallow spot that i found I reckon fish just a nice depth. We get dead tight to the far bank, it's too shallow. I'm not, com I'm not confident in that depth this time of year. I'm not putting the bait in yet, I'm just letting the rig settle because it should. Come on, I should pull the float down a little bit. And then the hope is that I tap in. I've only got five or six grains of corn in my pot. And then I'm just gonna drag my one grain of corn over the top and just hold it there. And we're just gonna have a, a early look in the really shallow water over and just see. No more indication, so let's go and get in the tap of corn in and see what happens. Five bits of corn, and that's it. One nice big piece on the hook. Let's just see if we can nick one. I'm going to bite there nice and slow. I'm hoping it's in the mouth and not foul hooked. Official two to the area, didn't it? It's just that we've hooked him in the mouth. I think we have. I think he's a big fish hooked in the mouth, I think. I think fish is super heavy, but I'm not light. I'm not probably over 11 hook length, I think I've got on here. Which will land quite a big fish, and I've got nine elastic on. Again, I'll land a reasonable fish. I thought if I was going to catch on the corn, it would be good fish. So. First, we keep swimming out there. Now, the dreaded acorn foul lockers begin. Yeah, going in that front flipper. That's what I thought I'd done. He's well hooked. I'm going to give myself five for him. Let's even get another one. Let's even get one of his friends. Right, guys, we're an hour in almost. Almost exactly. I've got a 16 pound on the clicker for two. I've got two cart for 16 pound on. After the. After that five pounder that I landed for you guys, I carried on fishing and I landed a ten pounder up to nicely in the mouth. Or eleven pounder I think he probably was. And then ten or fifteen minutes later I got another fish which I lost at the net, which was also fairly up in the mouth and he was a big fish. Another eight pounder. I saw him just come to the surface as the up pulled out. And I was thinking about giving up on this line because the fish are hard to catch and I've got other lines where I get some lights, but I've just up this one now, so I thought I'll turn the cameras on, one hour update, perfect timing. 
not quite as big as the last ones I don't think, but still not a small fish. Definitely looked in the mouth because I've got some control over it. And I'm just cautious about not pulling too hard because the last one I pulled too hard and pulled the hooks out of it. So take my time because it's taking sort of 15-20 minutes to walk. She just nicked him in the bottom of it. Right, and guys, my two hour update. For about an hour and a half, I dropped onto the maggot line in the deep water. And I, um, I've had a nice skimmer and a tench off it. And I've lost a few nice silvers, which the point's been folding over the maggot. And I've also lost a big carp over it, which um, is nicely hooked, but they've fallen out of. And then it's gone a bit, and it's gone a bit funny on me. So, because oh, I was pinging on it, and I've started to get liners and foul lockers from the fish up in the water, which was interesting because I think they were big fish. So, what I've decided to do. You know, topped it up with a bit of, bit of a pot of maggots rather than um, pinging maggots. And I'm going to just cut the pinging out for a minute on this deep line. And then what I've done is I've put some more corn back out on the corn line just to keep that going. I'm obviously still pinging down to my line to my left in the shallower water. And I've just started. on my shallower line it over it's a little bit further than that actually well I've just flipped there because that's my next place where I'm going to go and have a look so I'm going to ping there and see if the fish are going to come a bit shallow there well there it happens to be like four foot deep rather than six foot deep so maybe I can catch them there with a nice slow falling rig there rather than trying to catch shallow over this six foot line which is just going to end badly I think just going to try and catch them on the deck on this line. Little indication on this line. Nothing there. So I'm not going to ping any bait over this line. So I'm fishing now for a bit and see what happens. I'm going to ping bait over that other line. There's definitely carp signs of carp shallow in my peg. That was a lift right there. I have some nice skimmers on this line, so I'm hoping this is another one. You can smoke up now, whatever it is. It might be foul up. This might be. Might have been a fish that was just off the bottom. Sneaky suspicion we foul up something here. Yeah, we foul up. You can see its tail waggling. it's not too big and we can get it out. It doesn't trash the rig. Yeah, it's definitely foul because it's wiggling its tail. It's just speaked another fish it has. Shallow. There's a lot of shallow fish about in this area. Don't know if they're like that all over the lake, but there's a lot there we are. Pulled out which I knew what's gonna happen because he weren't far he weren't up properly so that's fine. Tenchy, isn't it? Mouth this fish. Absolutely sure. I only lifted the big two inches and it was on straight away. Good tension, I think. That's a nice skimmer. Take a few of that. While we're waiting for catch some better carp. Right then guys, three hours in, one o'clock, gone over to that to a shallower maggot line where I was pinging. Tried on that deep maggot line, messed about coming up and down, didn't really ever get anything sussed. 
but all the time I was pinging on that shallower maggot line that I plumbed up early on. Um, this is the fourth or fifth hook fish I've hooked on it now, and as many pots. Pound is gonna put me on uh, two pounder maybe. It's a very small mouth, don't get very many fish like this at acorn to be fair. Oh, I must have been well up there, so we're gonna give myself two pounder him because he's quite scrawny. Although he's long. Puts me on 44 pound a pot. I've hardly got any silvers, so let's call it £44 for now. And I might have a little bit less than that because I'm being cautious with my clicking. So I've not got me right way with me today. I've gone, slightly, gone up slightly in a hook size. Still fishing quite small, but I think that's an 18. That's a draining silver fish, uh, draining, my name, draining hook. And then I'm just tingling them. Um, ping, I'm not, the only way I fed this line is pinging. I've not put any weight down the hole. Uh, I'm pinging down to my left. But I'm not going to ping on this line that I'm shipping out to now because I, I, I ping on it when I'm playing the fish because I feel like uh, I foul up a couple on here and it seems to be when I'm pinging over the top more like, I mean, I probably still will foul up some, but. When I've been pinging over the top, I seem to foul up more, I seem to get more indications that aren't bites. And uh, I just want them to settle. I want to ping some, settle while I'm, while I'm dragging back. Cat the idea is now that I catch one, and then I can ping while I'm bringing him back. But obviously, if I don't get a bite after sort of four or five minutes, I'll have to ping. But I've just had a bite first put in there, so that's good. Got double maggot on just to try to make my maggot stand out a little bit more because we are sort of fishing with scattered bait on the Indian. So there we are, we've got one. So I'm double shipping here and getting back to my first ship so I've got the fish out of the swim. And then I'm just taking my time making sure to feed it nice and accurate. And if I'm not happy with it, like I wasn't quite happy with that, I'll just ping it again. And then back and play the fish out. I got a really light elastic on so I was expecting to catch a lot of silvers and um, mixed bag so I'm quite I'm fishing quite light. I could go a little bit heavier if I wanted to but I don't feel like I need to at the moment. Is anybody else catching that many? Fish are you know, giving a good scrap, but they're not summer strength, so they're still the target winter strength, so they're coming in. I'm, I'm not having a, many of the super big units like I did on the on the core, and I had some absolute head bailing there. I'm just getting sort of three, three, four pounds. That's a nice little two pounder, maybe three pounder. Right guys, just line across, slow down a little bit, so I'll swing round to the line down to the left where I've been pinging by the uh, aerator. And I've just I've had two fish and two puts down there, one was a two pounder, and one was seven or eight pounder, so I've probably got ten pounder fish. Two puts down there, so I thought I'd switch the cameras and hopefully I could hook another one. I'm doing the same here, when I hook one I'm just Wait until I've got it out of the way and then pinging. And I'm also pinging on the other, on the line across as well. Straight away that's gone this time. Pinging on the line across. Um, it could be a, like a three pound of howl or something. About a four or five pound ghost in. Seen him. Right up under me next there. I think he's done me 
here, my nets, I think. Let me grab my nets, I'm done, mate. Yes. It's quite frustrating. Let's go back out and see if we can up one quickly for you, another one. So if I do end up not, you know, not framing today or missing out on a, on a better framing place by a few pounds, it's because, I mean, I've lost two under the nets. One's done me net, one's done me up length, one's just transferred me into the net like that you just see. Probably a similar, two similar size fish. I've pulled out of a eight pound carp at the net, rim of the net, which was up nicely, just by trying to force it in the net too quick when I was on the corn line. So there in itself, 13 pound of fish. And so I've got no one to blame except myself for that. It's gone up. It's literally gone under while I, stuff, while I was catapulting the food. Indeed. Solid doubt there at the moment. Keeps up like, sort of like this, I should be on for a good weight. But, you know, invariably these things do slow down. Just ping that other line because that's where I will go if it's low, when it slows down a bit. Give it a rest. See if we can keep this one out of the coop nets. Another decent sized fish, four or five pound left. A little bit smaller this one. Lively little boy. start alternating these lines now this one and then the one over just to see what happens oh, it's the bite there on this right line it's a small fish I think or a tench feels tenchy so this one with the carp not about on the bigger fish on the boat yeah, that bite was quite we'll see I'm not going to feed it this time because I'm going to go over it. Oh well, well actually now this fish is open up now, it's all the way out there. Sorry that it's all the way out there now. I think it's a small carp, a little bit loopy. Loopy juice, or it could be a decent tench.
Right then, guys, match is over. Um, and I've managed to win the match with £117, something I'm not sure exactly. I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it's been a great day. I've had a really, really good day. Caught a lot of fish. I do feel like I've messed it up a little bit, and there was probably more like £140, £150 to be had today. Uh, what might not have been caught on the cameras was in the last sort of 30 minutes, I'm scrambling around to go and get another net. I hooked another fish. It took me rig off. I had to run around, put another rig on, which I think I might have caught on camera. Um, then that rig weren't quite working as well as the other rig down by the aerator. Uh, then I've tangled that rig to the point where that was unsalvageable, so I've had to go and get another rig out of my box. And I still couldn't really catch down to the aerator, thinking it was the rig, I was persevering. But then I've swapped back swapped lines back over to the island, and I've had two fish in the last two puts of the match, which are the ones that have taken me over the £100 mark, £100 mark so they're sort of like £10 a fish there in the last two puts. So that was nice finish to the match. And that means now for our um, £100 cost cutter challenge, we've taken £15 out for the peg fee, so we were down to £85, but now we've put £45 back in for our first place winnings. So we're £130 already. So this could go on for a while. Let's see how it goes. Catch you in a bit.